In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a kernel density plot in SPSS, which I think is a fairly fashionable thing to do in research papers these days, rather than just a generic histogram with a quasi-normal distribution or normal distribution laid over the histogram. So in this case here, the data that I'm going to plot is called V1. And you can't do this, to my knowledge, in the graphical user interface in SPSS, but there is syntax. And this was originally created by Andrew Wheeler at a post that I came across on Beanplot. So I've manipulated the syntax a little bit just to make sure that it's just the kernel density plot and a couple of other features associated with this syntax. But I will talk about the other features as well on a separate video. So this, the key element of the syntax is actually called element here. And you can see that the density kernel, and this is the type of function that it's applying in order to estimate the density associated with the distribution depicted in the chart. So this is called Epanechnikov, and I would say it's a fairly common technique. It's the default in SPSS, for those of you who know, for the lowest regression, you might be familiar with that. This is the default. It's a pretty good option in a lot of cases. I'll probably do a separate video on the various options that you can consider using. I think SPSS has about six of them. So I want to plot these data here, V1, with this syntax file. And I'm going to create a link in the description of this video so that you can download this syntax and not have to create it from scratch. But you do have to keep in mind that the name of the variable is V1. And so you're going to have to change the name of the variable if your variable is named differently than V1. Easy enough to do. I think there are only three instances where the variable is named. So if I click Run, I get the following plot which is, I think, a little bit more fashionable to report these days, as I mentioned earlier. I'm going to get rid of these grid lines to make it look a bit nicer. And then I'll point out a couple things about the chart. I'm also going to make it square. 5.208. There we go. So here's the kernel density plot I created with the specification for the density function which is that Russian name. And what's interesting is that you can kind of see a second distribution here. And I would say that these kernel density plots are useful for a couple of reasons. One is to depict bimodal distributions. It's probably a little bit better for that. But I would say overall that a kernel density plot is good when you want to depict a highly specific type of distribution associated with data. And I'll show you what I mean. Imagine if I had to create the distributional shape associated with these data in the typical way, which is going through descriptive statistics frequencies. And I got my variable here and click on charts and you'll have to have histograms, show normal curve on histogram, click continue. This is the option you've got. And you can see that SPSS creates this thing here, which is highly smoothed and it doesn't reflect this second bunching of the data near the value of 15. So it's highly smooth, not really an accurate representation of the flow of the data, whereas the kernel density plot is much more so. So this is how to create a kernel density plot in SPSS. Pretty simple format. Looks pretty good, I would say, and certainly something that you could publish in a paper. Now, many people overlay a rug plot onto a kernel density plot, and I'll show that in a separate video.